the mighty God we serve. Oh, we love you, Jesus. You are an awesome God. You are awesome. We love you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for your word. Thank you for peace. Thank you for your spirit. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Your mercies are new every morning. We love you, Jesus. Yes. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Amen and amen. God is good. Yes, all the time. Amen. Thank you for being here. May God bless you this morning. And um, yes, I believe it's going well with all of you. Your heart, your spirit, your mind, your body. And uh, may God give us peace this morning um, because of His Word. His Word is strong, it's powerful, and it's energetic. And um, as I preach the word, let's pray the word of God over our lives and make it real for us and make it true for us. And um, may we see the manifestations of the word of God because there's life in the word of God. That's why we are here. We are, we are not only listeners of the word, we are doers of the word, but um, we receive the word by faith. It's important to receive the word by faith. Now God has called me um, actually to speak more to mature type of people and mature Christians than the normal, you know, um, Christians, the young kids and the, you know, you, you know, the young adults and stuff. And sometimes we are struggling to get the young people um, right and give them peace peace in their lives now this morning I want to speak to you about order and peace and you will see the connection this morning um, about those two words there is a connection in the spirit without order there's no peace we must understand it and let me tell you that no kid if you are small in the Lord Jesus Christ, you do not want to hear anything about order. Do you know any kid, children, child, who loves order? If you love them, amen, give them a gift and a kiss. Kids don't love order. But it's so important to know it. Without peace, there's no order. Without order, there's no peace. Alright, there are two are connected with each other. And I want you to go with me to scripture. 1 Corinthians 14 verse 33. If you have your Bibles, you may turn there. So God has called me to reveal deeper things of God. And mysterious things and things that you need to know as an adult. In the Lord Jesus Christ a mature adult in the Lord Jesus Christ so um, I can just hear how many Christians that are small in Christ Jesus would say uh, we don't know about this because all kids is like that when they hear uh, sermons like this but God wants us to know this 1st Corinthians 14 verse 33 if you have your Bible, and I'm going to read, I believe it is out of the Amplified. It says, for he who is the source of their prophesying, so it speaks of God, is not a God of confusion and disorder, but of peace and order. So this is New Testament speaking to the Corinthians church by the Apostle Paul. 
So I'm going to give you things out of the Old Testament, but it's important to know that um, Paul says this in the New Testament, for we, for he is not a God of confusion and disorder, but of peace and order. So I'm speaking about order and peace. Without order, there's no peace. You know, uh, the last week I said about the three people that stand before God. You remember that message? And I said, you get the children, I write unto you, children, because these children before God. And then I write to you, young people, young sons of God. Um, because you have come to overcome the enemy. You come to a place. Children did not come there, uh, did not always overcome the enemy in their lives. So there's no peace. To get peace, there needs to be an order. I want to say it. So God is not of confusion and of dishonor, disorder, but of peace and order as it is the practice in all the churches of the saints. This needs to be the practice in all the churches of the saints. Now many times people are led by everything except by the Holy Spirit. And by the word of God. There's two powers on this earth. The word of God, God has given the word of God for us. And the Spirit to lead us. Alright. But sometimes, and I speak more about, you know, if you are not, um, uh, uh, if you are a small child of the Lord Jesus Christ, there is disorder sometimes. And many of those people feel led more by their emotions and their feelings. But more than, you know, do you know what I'm feeling? You know, do you know what I think? Emotions and wrong doctrine. Wrong doctrine means teachings. There's people that sometimes teach the word of God and they do not know specific things in order. So it's outside of order. I want to say to you here, I wrote it down. When you read things, you read things in order. You need to read things in order. Is it true? You need to understand things in order. Who of you ever start a book in the middle when you read it? Even in my own book, when I write it, I think it's on my first or second page, I will say there, please start in the beginning. Because I felt led by the Holy Spirit that it's so important thing to know, start in the beginning. Because nobody reads a book from the middle. But sometimes when we preach, we preach things outside of order. And God's church needs to be a God of order. He's a God of order. We need to understand things in order. We need to read things in order. To know where is everything fitting. If you do not read in order, there is confusion. And God is not the God of confusion. What is first mentioned? This is a very important fact that you can write down. What is first mentioned about this thing? So I always go back. To Genesis. I need to go back to the Old Testament. I need to know where did who said what to whom first. Because that is the word. The second thing is always the confirmation. But when you read the confirmation, maybe you read New Testament and you do not understand it's a confirmation. You, you start in the middle and you know things of the middle. And you are confused. And you try to teach and help me in the middle. You know that song, in the middle of the night. 
That's exactly where you are in the night. <laughs> Praise God. So start in the beginning and then we are going progress. We are reading and understanding as we go on because first mention is the most important thing that you need to know. First mention. There is an order in the beginning, then middle, then the end. God wants us to know that. So God is not a God of dishonor or confusion, but of order and peace. Psalm 119 verse 133. Let not your emotions and your feelings and your wrong doctrine of starting in the middle help you because you will not have peace in your life. It says order my steps in the word. And let not any iniquity have dominion over me. Listen, you get two types of Christians. The, the Adam man and the Christ man. The Adam man needs to get still rid of the flesh part. And Psalm 119 says, Order my steps in thy word. So, you ask the Holy Spirit to lead you, to help you with your steps in the word. Because starts in the beginning, start in the beginning and not in the middle. And read and look for the first mention of things and then you're going on. Because you are going to get confused and there will be no peace because there's no order in your life. Lord, help me in the steps in thy word. And let not any iniquity have dominion over me. This is proof. If you are saying to me, Martin, I do not really think order is so important. And God uh, doesn't mind about order. You know, we are people of grace. Do you hear me? Let me come back. Order my steps in thy word and let not thy iniquity have dominion over me. People have iniquity. Iniquity is a Hebrew word for sin. It's an English word but it comes from the word Avon. Avon. And you get another word Peresh. Per. Alright. Leave that. Dominion over me. So the proof is in the thing. Do you have peace? I don't care what you know about a specific subject here in the middle of the night, in the middle of the song, in the middle of the book, in the middle of your understanding. You must go to the first and understand God is a God of order and you will get peace. If your life, the proof is in the peace. Do you have peace in your life when you speak on things? Or do you speak on things? I only speak on this. And there's no peace surround you. Dominion. Let iniquity have no dominion over you. Iniquity is sin. Sin will have dominion over you if you are not in order. Then there will be no peace. I hope you can hear what I'm saying. Colossians 2 verse 8. See to it that no one takes you captives through hollow. It means empty. And deceptive philosophy. Which depends on human traditions. And basic principles. Of this world rather than on Christ. Verse 5 is three verses before that. For though I be absent in the flesh, yet I am with you in the spirit, joying and beholding your order 
and steadfastness of your faith in Christ Jesus. Paul is saying yet to the Colossians, when I look to you, I behold you, I see order. And I'm happy. I see that the order that you are thinking and understanding and knowing things brings steadfastness in your faith. Another word, it brings peace. God wants us to have peace. Peace in our lives. Peace in our circumstances. But if there's no order, there's no peace. We need to understand that God is a God of order. And I'm going to explain to you, because the moment when we speak of order, that the young people, the young adults, and oh no, we don't want to hear anything about this order stuff. <laughs> it says, Did I read to you Colossians 2 verse 8? Yes. Yeah. And 5. Yeah. Alright. I want you to turn with me to Exodus 25 verse 8. Exodus 25 verse 8 and 9. And then verse 40. I want you to understand and see this. Let them make me a sanctuary. Okay, this God says now yet to Moses. Let me, let them make me a sanctuary. Um, this is the first mention of a sanctuary. Do you understand that? It's Old Testament. Exodus 25 verse 8. Do you see it? Let them make me a sanctuary. Are you a sanctuary? Are you a sanctuary? Yes. So you that are the sanctuary is not the first mention. Hello. Exodus 25 verse 8 is many years before you. Before you are a sanctuary. The first mention. Moses come here. Make me a sanctuary. First mention. Start in the beginning. There is an order. When you understand the order and the first mention of things, you will understand things correctly. There will be no confusion. Let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them. Are God dwelling amongst us? Did God dwell amongst them as well? Yes. Who was first? Them. And you shall make it accordingly to all that I show you. You will make it according to what I show you, says God. The pattern of the tabernacle or the dwelling and the pattern of all the furniture of it. The pattern. The order. Do it exactly as I am showing you. The outside and the inside. Of what? The sanctuary. Are you a sanctuary? Yes. Are you the first sanctuary? Nope. Start in the beginning. Do it exactly. So God has thing in his mind, in his thoughts, in his will, that he says to Moses, do it exactly. There is a pattern. Do it, copy it exactly. There is an order. Do it exactly. The outside and the inside. Of what? The sanctuary. I am now a sanctuary. So God, work in me order. Can you understand? If you preach and focus and let them, you emphasize anything in the New Testament, outside of the knowledge of first mention in the Old Testament, you are not. You are in error. Always. I will show that people most, I will tell you, 80% of people that speaks of grace does not know what grace is. Speaking of righteousness, do not know what righteousness is. Speaking of promises and faith 
and, and justification and redemption and sanctification. All those words that does not really know what that means. Because they start in the middle of the night. You need to know that God says make me a sanctuary according to what I show you. The pattern and all the furniture of it. Verse 40 says, and see to it that you copy, copy exactly their pattern which was shown you on the mountain. Listen, small kids doesn't want to hear what I'm telling you this morning. Order. They don't love order. But God has called me for mature Christians so that you will come to peace in your life. And you need to know there's an order. God is a God of order. Exodus 40 verse 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses saying, On the first day of the first month shall thou set up the tabernacle and the tent of congregation. Verse 2, And thou shalt put there in the ark of the testimony, and cover the ark with the veil. It sounds to me like it's specific. And thou shalt bring in the table, and set it in order, the things that are to be set in order upon it. There is a tabernacle. Are you a tabernacle of God? Yes, you are. Are you a sanctuary of God? Yes, you are. Are you the Ark of the Covenant now? Yes, you are. But are you the first? No. First mention is the most important because God has given us things in it. We need to know and understand it. Do it exactly as the pattern as I given it unto you. And here it says, And you shall bring in the table and set it in order. The things that are to be set in order upon it. And thou shalt bring it the candlesticks and light the lamps thereof. Exodus 27 verse 20 and 21. Listen, when Moses had to build the tabernacle of God, you, 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 you know about the outer court and the inner court and the most holy place, you could not do what you want to do. You could not come and bring any offering. There was an order of things. You first come and bring your offering and they burn it. And then there was a washing bay. And the priest had to wash their hands in the washing by after the burnt offering to went into the whole, uh, the holy place. Not the most holy place. And then there was bread. And there was light. And there was smoke. It was specific. It was specific bolt. Every law of God is specific for a reason. God is not the God of confusion, but you will not understand New Testament things if you do not understand Old Testament things. It is images and patterns and shadows trying to explain to us the New Testament and how we must do things. For what reason? For peace. For peace. And people, Christians, do not have peace in their life. Because there's no order in their life, individually. There's no order in their home. And there's no order in their church. Because they placing emphasis on their ministry upon one thing. We speak only of five. One emphasis on one thing. Or in this church we will only speak of the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. If you want to put emphasis on one thing, put it on Christ. Because I do not want to know anything amongst you except Christ and Him being crucified. So the moment you preach or you speak or you teach or you believe only one thing, 
in the order of many things and it's in the middle there is a little bit confusion things doesn't work out for you there's no peace in your life and God wants you to have peace but peace only comes through order and the order is do it exactly as God said and thou shalt come come on Exodus 27 verse 20 and 21 and thou shalt command the children of Israel command means uh, it's a law but it's not written it's spoken hey come here that's a command in the army yes sir it's not uh, if I want to uh, uh, I don't need to come like this <laughs> a order and do you know how many Hebrew words there is for order in the Old Testament? And all of them speaking the same type of thing. It says in Exodus, Exodus 27 verse 20, And thou shalt command the children of Israel, that they bring the pure oil, olive beaten for the light, to cause the lamb to burn always. The lamb must burn always in the tabernacle. In the tabernacle of the congregation, without the veil, which is before the testimony, Aaron and his son shall order it from the evening to the morning before the Lord. They shall order it. It means, order means a way. They must order it. Order is not God's sight. It's our sight. But with the power of Holy Spirit within us, we need order. From the evening to until the morning, the light had to burn. And it had to be specific. They encamp around this tabernacle exactly like God ordered it. There was an order, like in the form of a cross. The laws... The offerings, the, the garments of the priest was exactly. And everything speaks of order and speaks of something of Christ. They must order it from evening to morning. And it shall be a statue forever unto their generations on, on the behalf of the children of Israel. This will be a statue. This will be, do you know what's a statue? A statute is a principle. A statute. Yeah. This will be a principle. Forever for the children of Israel. Now you are telling me you are not Israel, but God says I will write my laws there will come a day I will write my laws in Israel and Judah in their hearts. And are the, Lord, the law of the Lord in your heart? Yes. Yes. Job 10 verse 22 says this. A land of darkness as darkness itself and of shadow of death without any order. And where the light is as darkness. A land without any order is a land of darkness. A land where the shadow of death is or darkness is is a land without order. This is Job 10 verse 22. And I'm speaking of order and the connotation to peace. Without peace there is darkness. And shadow of death. Order only comes in. Peace comes only in when there is an order. When you know things. And understand things in order. And read things in order. And do things in order. Even in the Old Testament, when we go to David, you remember the ark was the presence of God, 
and David um, had the ark in the in their company in their presence and then they lost the ark you remember that story first chronicles 15 verse 30, 13 want to read that to you first chronicles 15 verse 13 for because ye did it not as at the first listen to the words what he said now for because ye did it not at the first the lord our god might i breach upon us for that we sought him not after the due order the lord god might a breach upon us do you know what is that god's wrath came upon us why we lost the presence of god why because we did not at the first what he told us how to do it for that we sought him not after the due order there was a due order nobody could touch the ark there was an order it was specific and God's wrath was on people that means there were no peace because there was no order due order if they did things in due order they would never left the presence of God lost the presence of God and God's wrath was not on them so I want you to see order Genesis 22 verse 9 even when Abram talking about Abram before Moses and they came to a place 22 verse 9 Genesis 22 verse 9 and they came to a place which God had told him of and Abram built an altar there and laid the wood in order and bound Isaac his son and laid him on the altar upon the wood did you know when God said to Abram come here I want you to get wood first get wood second get fire third get your son it's an order Abram without anything without the presence of God in the sense of the tabernacle and the ark like Moses and stuff even he knew there was an order listen you do not have time but I can keep you busy yeah to show you how many times the people and the prophets did it exactly in order as if it is nothing to us because we do not know it we do not understand it we do not understand that God is a God of order like in our first scripture where Paul is saying all the church needs to be have order they need to be a church of order because God is not a, a, a God of this order. And that does not speak of. We are going to sit now. There needs to be silence. Stand up. It's not that. It means an order of knowing that God does things in order to give you peace. And the order needs to come from our side. <laughs> if it was from God's side, nobody even, never would have spoken about that. Because God says, I'm alright, it's grace. But it is not that. It's first mention. You left the first mention of how to carry this ark. Hmm. What? We need to understand. We do not understand long suffering long suffering means long to wrath God says in the Old Testament I am compassionate I'm gracious I'm merciful and I'm long suffering long to wrath it means not no wrath it means wrath it took long for God to get to wrath thank you God but there is a order of God specific he laid the wood in order not even him let's go to first kings 18 verse 31 elijah this is only a few 
I can keep you on and on and on and on. But I want to tell you that you need to start from the beginning to understand God and preach God correctly. Understand to read why. Why is things like it is? For God wants to give us peace. But He cannot give us peace where there is confusion. When we start in the middle of a song, in the middle of a book, in the middle of scripture, in the middle of the plan. First Kings 18 verse 31. And Elijah took 12 stones according to the number of the tribes of the sons of Jacob. Boy, it's specific, eh? <laughs> he, he built now an altar. Alright? God says, I want you to build an altar. He took 12 stones according to the number of the tribes of the sons of Jacob. And to whom the word of the Lord came. So the Lord says, took 12 stones, saying, Israel shall be thy name. Verse 33, and he put the wood in order, and cut the bullocks in pieces, and laid on it the wood, laid him on the wood, and said, fill the barrels of water, and pour it on the burnt sacrifices, and on the wood. It was specific. Now, I cannot go now in detail, but I'm going to make a message of this. To see the day when Elijah had to build this altar before God. God says, do it exactly this way. Because this will be a shadow and a type of Jesus on the cross. The twelve stones and the wood and the throwing of the water in a ditch. Everything speaks of Christ. It's shadows of Christ. First mentioning for us to understand grace and righteousness and favor and blessings. We need to understand it. He put it in order. My last scripture that I want to read to you. Isaiah 9 verse 6 Isaiah 9 verse 6 Alright, before I'm going to read that to you, I want to draw to you something on the board. There are you. You are lost without God. Here is the Lord Jesus Christ. The first thing, this is now a order. The first thing you need to accept. This. Without this first point, you accept it. Nothing will work in your life. The second point, you need the Holy Spirit. Inside of you. Because there you are, you are lost. It doesn't help you to do the law. Because Christ came to show you, you cannot be saved through your own works. It is by His work. So you must accept Him. Then you need to have the Holy Spirit inside of you. The third thing, the third order, is you need to believe. First, you accept Him. Then, you need the Holy Spirit inside of you. Now, God's grace is inside of you, but you believe. And as you believe, God's grace flows. They need first blood. You need to accept the blood. Then you need to know, believe in faith. 
and then you need to know Christ. Alright. Can you see the three parts? Every time, listen, you do not know it, I know it. Every time when you're going to read anything in the Bible about grace, you will see in that same scripture the word belief or faith and blood. Always. There's an order. First, you need to get the blood, except the price of Jesus Christ. You need to believe or have faith. Then grace flow. If you placing emphasis on grace, meaning it's unmerited favor, because you started in the middle of the song. Oh, it's not by the law of God. It is by grace. Everything is by grace. You start in the middle. You start not at the right place. You will speak out of order. You will bring confusion to people. Because there will be no order. Because everything will be according to you. It's unmerited favor. Unmerited favor. That means no works. No uh, Sit still. No works. No works. Unmerited favor, but it's the middle of the sermon. It's the middle of the purpose. It's the middle of God. It's not the beginning. We need to understand first things first. Understand, why is there a law? The law is not bad. Because the law, Romans 4 says the law is good. And it's holy. And it comes from the Lord. I do not understand. I do not stand under the law. So Jesus Christ would come and say. The whole law. Is. Made in two parts. <coughs> love the Lord your God. And love. Yourself. If you say I'm not under law. Don't love anybody. Don't love God and don't love yourself. The whole law. If you say whole law. This side. This side. Equals two laws. Love your God and love yourself. Am, you, am I under the law? Yes, I am under the law. What law? The two laws. Love your God and love yourself. And when I do that, I fulfill the whole law. I am an the law. But understand why God gave the law in three phases. And to Moses and to the Israelites because of their disobedience. But before the law came, there was a promise. You need to understand order. The first was a promise. Second, there was a law. Third, there was a kingdom. You need to understand to read the things from the beginning. So that there is no confusion in our lives. Isaiah 9 verse 6 and 7. Finish it with this word. For to us a child is born. To us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulders. His name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. There's the word peace again. He is Prince of Peace. Remember that word. Alright? Because we're going to read the next verse. Remember peace. But a child is born, a son is given. What is first? A child is born and a son is given. So first, second. Jesus was born in Maria 2,000 years ago. First. When was the son given to us? When he was baptized. A ministry started. Now it says, And there will be a government on his shoulders. There will be a government. There will be a people. There will be authority. There will be a purpose on his shoulders that he is carrying
The son will carry it, not the child. A child is born unto us. A son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders. And we will say, he is prince of peace. Verse 7. Of the increase of this government and peace. The increase of this government. Who is this government? Who is this people? It's us. The increase. Everybody is speaking about Every time when they read this scripture, they speak only about the government. The people. God says His government will increase. It will never end. It will never end. But this is only the first part. Listen. For the increase of His government and peace. So important as the government of God is, is the peace of God. And without order, there is no peace. There shall be no end. God wants to give peace. There shall be no end. Upon the throne of David. And upon his kingdom. Upon the throne of David. Who is sitting on the, the throne of David? Jesus. Jesus Christ is sitting upon the throne of David. And upon his kingdom. Who is his kingdom? We. Who is his government? We. We are on his shoulders. He had the purpose to brought a kingdom, a people. He had the purpose. Who is it? It's us. Upon the throne of David and upon the, his kingdom to order it. To order it. There is that word. And to establish it. We must establish it and we must order it. We must establish it and we must order it. With judgment and with justice. From hence forth even forever. Are you a child of God? Are you a sanctuary of God? Are you made specific by God? In a order of Blood, your faith and belief, and through His grace. Yes. God says, the government will be no end, and the peace will be no end. Then it says, upon the throne of David, Jesus Christ will perform it. He will order it, but the the kingdom and the government will order it as well. And establish it. So we need to order it. We need to order things. We need to establish things. With judgment. Who is judging? What type of man judge? Eh? A judge. If we are a government to rule, we are actually judges making judgments. By our judgments, we will order and establish. This, listen, this is not speaking to child, children. That's why children will not understand this message. We need to understand that God is a God of order and He wants us as His government and as His people. We need to order it. We need to make judgments with justice from henceforth forever. Is there an end on this? No, it's forever. The seal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Do you know what's another word for the seal of, the, of God will perform this? The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ will perform this. It will not be our own work. But it will be the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ within us will perform it. 
And when the grace of our Lord is within us, but the grace will not come before we accept Him, when we're part of Holy Spirit, when we believe, then the grace can flow. The seal of God will come in us and then we will perform it and order it. What? Our judgments of justice. So grace is a power that will come within us, work through us, and upon us, for us to order and establish, to order and establish, put things in order. What things in order? The things of the kingdom of God. Understand things in order. Know things in order. Start from the beginning. Know things, that things is specific. We need to know from the beginning. Put our lives in order so that peace can be in us because there will be no end of this government or the peace of God. And the peace of God can only come through order. And if we know the order of things and we understand in the order of things and we walk in the order of things. So, judgment. Does that sound to you like speaking? I'm a judge and I make a judgment. Does it sound like speaking? So we need to speak for it to be ordered and established. We need to pray. If there is any time, any emphasis, not in the right order, you do not understand, then there is no peace. But we need to know, five, that we need to speak or prophesy. You need to pray. Why did the Lord Jesus Christ say, pray for your governments, so that there will be peace. peace? Who is praying? You. Who is speaking? You. Who needs to establish it? You. With the Lord Jesus Christ, because he's on the throne of David and on the kingdom upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice don't put too much emphasis on only five don't put too much emphasis on grace don't put too much emphasis on one thing it's a lot of things and it need to be in order for us not to be confused and to have peace in our life to bring things in order and establish God's kingdom on this earth because God is calling us to speak and prophesy and pray so that we can have peace but you need to do it and you need to do it in the right form exactly as the way that I gave it to you Moses the pattern that I gave unto you, do it the right. The sanctuary must be correct. Building the tabernacle exactly. The offerings, do it exactly this way. The offerings, do it this way. The camp, encampment, do it this way. Do it this way. Copy it exactly. So it's not what you are feeling and what your emotions you are telling you. It is what God is saying. This is an order and we need to know God's order. And that's the only way that we will have peace in our lives.
when we understand this. Do you understand? Yeah, I hope. You know, many times I see lo uh, wrong doctrine and wrong teachings and great Christians and people of God that love the Lord Jesus Christ, but they're missing the whole thing because they do not know that God moves in order. And believe me, there's no peace in that ministry, in that home, or in that life of that people that does not understand order. Because there is confusion, although they preach about maybe believing, or prophesying, or faith, or grace, or whatsoever. If you want to speak on a thing, speak upon Christ, and only on Christ. And stand right, start from the beginning, and know that, yes, you need to go to church. Yes, you need to pray. Yes, you need to believe. Yes, you need to have faith. Yes, you need to prophesy. Yes, you need to love. Yes, you need the law of God. Don't throw the law of God away. <laughs> yes, you need the Spirit of God. If your emphasis are only on one, there's no order, there's no confusion, and nothing help for us then. May the Lord Jesus Christ bless you this morning. Jesus mighty name. Amen.